this is where we left off in part one here. We talk about the spouses. Always write and listen to them. And so from here, we'll continue on to part two here. So, down in breakfast, cafeteria. This woman comes over to my table. I'm sitting there. He sits down and says, hey, my name's Linda. You know, and I'm a speech therapist here. And I'm here to watch you eat. And so there it was first morning. And they're already, I mean, I'm in breakfast and we're already starting therapy. And uh, she's watching eat because that's one of the things that they did to see how, because you were a chicken, a choking hazard. So they watch to see how you eat, if you're able to eat okay, if you need to kind of retrain yourself on how you eat, chew, and things like that. And then from there, the breakfast, she took me up to, to the therapy room up in, uh, up in the second floor. And so spent the next hour doing you know, speech therapy. And so that's the other thing. Uh, so rehab hospital, there's three speech, there's three therapies, speech, occupational, and physical. So the first one here is, you know, speech. And it's not just about speech, even though a lot of us have speech issues, or even now I still do a lot of kind of slurring, sometimes hard to understand me. Uh, but, you know, so that's, it's not just about speech, it's also about cognitive issues, because a lot of folk victims uh, have some cognitive issues. So, you know, the ability to count or, you know, do what would be considered normal or regular tasks, you know, like uh, reading a story and being able to read number of key points or something or looking at a picture and, you know hey what's in the picture things like that and that may sound simple uh, but you know a lot of a lot of people have issues with that and sometimes you don't even know you have the issue and so it takes time to find that out so anyway so that's a speech three therapies are about an hour a day they split up through the day so you got that one and then um there's also what they call occupational therapy and that's about um, basic functions. Uh, so for me, you know, they, they were working on things like, you know, with my arm and my hand, trying to see what we, where we're at, how, what we can get done. But also things like, um, you know, what they call transitioning, like from a chair to a bed, the toilet, and things like. So they got like to call a, um, you know, like the board that you go ahead and you use a board to slide back and forth. Slide board is what it's called. Uh, you also have the gate belt that you, that's I call it your new best friend because you know from day one you, you have this belt you, you wear when anytime you move so that's something you can be holding on to you and so that's regardless which therapy you know where you're going you, you have that bed you got that belt on and then uh, there's the physical therapy and they they're, they're more focused on the physical you know strength they working on you know, standing up trying to get you walk and things like that and so Day one, you know, they were at it right away. So, uh, so those are three therapies, and so you got three weeks. Usually, some people get two weeks, but it's generally three weeks. A lot of has some of it has to do with insurance, also. So, so another thing, um, then you go to lunch and dinner every, you know, every day. Oh, the other thing about the cafeteria is uh, they put you in a big boy bed. I call it big boy bed. You know, because, uh, you know, and if you're in the cafeteria, you'll notice, you know, there'll be, I mean, every once in a while, somebody, you'll hear somebody choke and never they'll choke and or drooling or whatever the case, you know, and there again, that's because you might have problems, you might have problems on shooting, like in my case, on the left side. I mean, it's all come back now for that, but, you know, and that's the other reason for the big boy bib, so, all right. Um, what's another thing? Uh, sl uh, sleep. Uh, sleep, sleep, sleep be tired I'd be very tired and but that's annoying doctor said that's a normal thing it's part of recovery part of that construction process going on in your body you sleeping a lot uh, so when you have time you'll be sleeping super I call it super tired uh, there's just another thing with uh, now so at this point it's been a week you know you had a stroke a week ago and you're in your first few days um, you have to rehab hospital and there's the thing I call hey where's my leg or where's my arm because you don't you don't know where it's at, even though know it's right there. I mean, you have to look for it because, you know, in the way our brains work, you know, you feel like you're moving your arm, but it's not going in. The same with the leg. Uh, in the hospital bed, you know, they got the rail there because if you, if you got the rail down, you find yourself, you know, the leg will fall or your arm will fall. Just like in your wheelchair, you know, if you're sitting there, and you, if your arm gets out of the, they usually have a arm rest in the wheelchair. And if your arm gets out of there, it'll be dangling. 
and you want to be aware of it. So, uh, you know, things like that, you got to maybe start creating an awareness. I mentioned in the previous video, I mentioned about adjustments. You know, those are things you got to make be aware of. Also, like a pillow, putting a pillow on the day. Don't put a pillow under your arm. Does your shoulder see? Like, I can, sh I can shrug both my shoulders now, but that was one of the first things that started working. I was getting you to shrug your shoulder. Uh, you know, to be able to move your shoulder. But, you know, when you first have the stroke, you're not able to move that. So, uh, pull on your shoulder, keep you comfortable. Also, keep you kind of adjusted a little bit. And then also under the legs, depending on the situation. All right. So, and then the other thing about the, um, you know, just the mental attitude. Uh, if you've, if you got a negative attitude or feeling sorry for yourself, I mean, it's understandable, but you got to stop it. You got to get a positive attitude and, you know, get ready to get to work. Uh, you know, because the stroke happened, it's done with, it's behind us. So you got to move forward. Two doctors that used to visit me every day, they got a kick out of me because like on the second day I was there, they see me on my, with my laptop and I, and when they asked me what I was doing, I said, when I told them what I was doing, you know, which I, what, what I was doing is working on schoolwork because uh, I teach a big business courses and I, you know, online. And so I was fortunate because I was actually able to still keep working. And I, and in hindsight, and the doctors read me that that helps the cognitive part. Uh, I was very fortunate there to be able to keep doing that schoolwork. You know, they knew I had a stroke and, uh, you know, that week in ICU, I wasn't doing anything, but they were able to, uh, say okay you know if, you, if you, that's what you want to do most people can't because you know a lot of people have to actually physically go to work so that was the advantage of the hard life thing for me but uh they were really uh they said they were impressed i don't know if they were they just tell me that but you know that was a good thing and so that was something else i was able to do so that was a good distraction for me to be able to do my work now another good distraction is just visitors um you know like in my case, you know, I've got uh, my two grandsons that I call grand men. And uh, I even got a book, kids book series that started. I was one of these obnoxious grandparents. You know, back in the old days, you'd flip the, people pull their wallets out, flip out all the pictures. And with, with Facebook these days now, you do it on Facebook. And a friend of mine said, hey, with all these stories you tell us, you should write a kids book. And which, so I started doing that. So that's the adventures with Pop Pop. And uh, so that's one of the things we did do. And so with them visiting, it was a nice distraction. I'm, I'm, I'm on the way. I'm the way. Papa. I got it, I got it, dog. Papa. Oh, dear. So any distractions you can get, it's great. But attitude's a big thing. You, get, you gotta be positive and you gotta have a positive attitude. And you know, do to put the work in and be willing. You know, you know, you won't get past the being tired part. You know, but that that is part of it. Um, you know, and then after you know, three weeks. I mean, the days go by. It's saying you know, Monday through Friday do therapies. The weekends you don't. Uh, generally, unless you show up a day late or something, they'll do it on Saturday or something also. And so you know, but basically, you know, after three weeks, you get discharged and you head home. And, uh, you know, even when you get home, now for me, you know, I, I was, you know, super tired and I was going to bed at 5.30, waking up at, you know, 5.36 next morning. And, and the doc said, that's normal. So, okay. Oh, plus taking a nap in the afternoon too. That's, uh, you know, so that's, so that's more to come like in the, when, so from rehab hospital, you go to a, a, what they call inpatient therapy. I'll do that in the next video. But anyway, so, you know, rehab hospital, it's basically this get you set up, get you going, get you started for a recovery that's gonna take, you know, however long it takes you, you know, some, you know, some people it takes a few months, six months, a year, a year and a half, it depends. But it's a process and the um, thing that'll get you through it is faith and, you know, positive outlook, positive, you know, attitude. So I think that should be enough for this video, but I'll, I'll do more. Next one, I'll talk about the uh, inpatient therapy where you, you have to get out of the hospital, you can start going to physical therapy every day. So, but hey, thanks for watching and uh, that'll do it for now.